Welcome to our next episode of What Now? And today we have an exciting thing to share with you, especially talking about the spirit in finance with our very good friend from Romania, Ivo, uh, who's uh, Mark's very dear friend. So over to you, Mark. Please introduce Ivo and bring him into our world. Hi. I'm breathless. I'm so happy that Eva is joining us uh, in this moment of existential crisis when the world is paralyzed in fear. Yeah. And here you are smiling. Uh, I'll rem remind the audience, Eva lives in Transylvania. Like everyone knows what happened in Transylvania. I'll, I'll try to say without a Romanian accent. Because, uh, but Eva and I met, I remember that, I still remember the day when Evo interviewed me for his book, Spirit and Finance. I was sitting in the sun in the backyard and Evo said, what's your vision? And I, I think I said, as an economy of love and, and you started to cry. Mm -hmm. And I said, I gotta go visit this guy. I've never been to Holland. And uh, I was teaching in Karlskrona in Sweden. And, uh, and I jumped over to Houston where Evo was and we sat together. We were like in the little schoolboys in this church uh, playing the pipe organ together, saying, I think we were once brothers. We were probably, Evo's like, I think we were both bishops in the church. And Dr. <laughs> Hugh Land, Dr. E. Haleakala, sitting there, this old Hawaiian's like, what are you doing, Dr. Hugh Land? He says, I'm cleaning. What? What do you mean you're cleaning? It doesn't look like you're cleaning. <laughs> oh, I know what you're doing. You're holding the space of love. And uh, wow. so I can't say enough about Evo, amazing man, um, son of a banker. We won't hold that against your father. <laughs> Uh, you, have an, you have an amazing wife. You have an amazing son. You're an amazing pianist. You are. And an amazing uh, retreat center yeah. as well. <laughs> and and an amazing retreat, amazing vision for the world. You're a teacher of hope, Pono Pono, which we'll get into. Um, I call it real love medicine, which the world so desperately needs now. Hmm. This ancient Polynesian tradition. You wrote Spirit and Finance, which was brilliant. You you brought me to Holland to speak in front of all those bangers in The Hague and blew their hearts open. It just goes on. I can't say enough that you are the antidote to this virus. Oh. Um, <laughs> thank you. Beautiful. I, I don't know what to say anymore now. We better, uh, <laughs> we better switch to the next guest now. <laughs> we, just start, we just start crying. We're, we're men who cry. <laughs> Or just play the piano. <laughs> I think like like Anik, I said to Anika before, we all look in the mirror. We, we, <laughs> what we what we see in each other is that, I, I think, is Anika, I talked yesterday a little bit, and she explained me in the Muslim tradition, they speak about the light within. Is that true, Anika? Yes. Yeah. yes. And I think divine that, that, light. Yeah, the, the divine, divine light. light within. And that is what we... Yeah, what, what we try to recognize in each other and, and in the yes. people, but also in the in all living beings, in the animals, who are coming more outside now because the people are more inside. And I live here in nature. I can really see that animals are so happy. <laughs> but they, you see them more. You see them more. They come out. They have, uh, even in Holland, in the Netherlands, I hear uh, one lady today, she said, yeah, we have a fox in our garden now. Normally, we never have that. So it's uh, a special yeah. time. But yes. thank you, Mark. I also remember uh, the first time we meet, uh, we had, I had also tears because uh, I felt very alone uh, talking about love uh, and, and an economy of love. And then you suddenly meet an economist who is as crazy as you are. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very grateful. Very grateful. Being here. Yeah. So can I just say that I also had tears yesterday when we spoke oh. and you said spirit in finance and I was like oh hello this is what I write about as well yeah. and I was also wow there's another man crazy like me maybe <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, but maybe, of... maybe there are many 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 more of and, course. And it's time that is one of the things I, I love to be active in to, to make them visible yeah to make I them think, visible yes. and yeah. to connect them yeah. Because I think the, the, key, the key question in your program is what now? Huh? <laughs> yeah. And yes, as you rightly said, bring them all together. 
yeah. that whoever, wherever they are, we have just yeah. created this platform to say, yeah. let's all talk about money, yeah. love, forgiveness, spirit in finance, and you know, happiness yeah. in the world, well-being. Yeah. So yeah. 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 yeah that's yeah. very true. Yeah. And by the way, uh, Ihar Yaka Yulen, the, the man from the whole Ponopono, Mark and I, we meet him, and I worked a few years together with him. Uh, yeah. He, he, I, yeah. This is incredible. I, I, it's incredible what we experienced there. It's. Uh, I, he, he taught me many important lessons in this life. Uh, and one of the key lessons uh, is that he said, there is nothing outside yourself. So we all, he said, Ivo, do you know, whenever you experience a problem, hmm. you're always there yourself. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, the, the essence he taught me is to start to love everything also our enemy we 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 try to to we we are we tend to make our opponents even now in the world it's it, i feel it's getting more and more we make our opponents uh, our enemy mm. uh but we should love them and should go more inside hey what's it in me that i find so difficult to hear mr trump speaking or what's it in me that i you know to bring it back to us to bring it back to us and to start to have that compassion. I saw a, a, a great a great interview from Gabo Mate. He's from Hungary, our neighbor. Yeah, he yeah, lives Gabo Canada. Mate. He lives in Canada. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And um, he spoke about Mr. Trump and how it is possible that the uh, we are so, so many people so angry to him. Okay. And then he, uh, he explained about the life of Trump, his father and mother, how he was beaten up, how his mm. brother mm. killed himself. Uh, how, Ew, and, and, and he did not say that uh, to say, okay, everything what Trump do is beautiful. No, 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 no. But to start to feel compassion, to start to feel pain, mm. and, and mm. to see everything, not to speak right, this is normal, what is but to start to understand. We, mm. I think a lot of us, including myself, we are in pain, we have traumas, we have stuff in our lives, all kind of, and it's, it's, it's important to, to start to deal with that and not project it on our leaders or whoever. <laughs> exactly how yeah. Boris Johnson is now, he's in intensive care and everybody's talking about, oh, but he killed my brother and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah. no, I want him to heal. Yeah. You know, it's not like you want him yeah. dead because yeah. whatever he did, he also yeah. he's also a human being with his limitations. He's trying. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so Evo, can you know? I since uh, taking that training in Amsterdam, the whole Pono Pono, which <laughs> mostly I was laughing because yeah. because it, fe it felt so self evident, as they would say, that love is the only antidote. It's the only path forward. Uh, and and what, one thing I want to reflect on, because not jumping straight into the what now, but what what Dr. Hulen has taught, and people probably don't realize who this man is, is the man that Joe Vitale wrote the book about Zero Limits, who, who said, I heard about this mythical man who healed all these criminally insane yeah. patients in Hawaii just yeah. by looking at their files and saying, I, I forgive you, I love you. Yeah. What? Yeah. You know, and, and so, but this this whole ponopono which actually means to be make right what is right yeah that's what it actually means in the in the polynesian language and i work with the tahitians yeah. so what are the four tenets you know uh help me because i forget one of them it's like always uh, please forgive me right yeah. and i don't care what order thank you and i love you and i will yeah. say the only line that matters is i love you uh, yeah. because and so what the polynesians have taught me is when they went into these long canoe journeys on the on the South Pacific, yeah. uh, and the Polynesians originally from Taiwan, where money was first invented, interesting, yeah. that they would go into these canoes reconciling with each other. Otherwise, they might kill each other on the journey. So here we're entering a new journey yeah. in the canoe together in yeah. this crisis. Yeah. How will we enter the canoe by reflecting on these beautiful four lines that seem, seem so simple. The mind is like battled yeah. because they're so simple. Yeah, 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 so, so, so beautiful.
Yeah. Yeah. So, Eva, do you? Um, I I didn't get it. Do you offer these uh, workshops or training? Uh, not anymore. I used to do it a few years, uh, but I still practice Hope upon for myself a lot. Yeah, it's right. a kind of. Nah, yeah. I I don't even do it only concept anymore. It's it's going. It's just mm. a way of life. <laughs> yeah. So it's like a meditation, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, uh, now whenever things come up uh, which are difficult or painful or, or, or they can also be beautiful, by the way, it, it's just to, to look at it with a lot of love. Yeah, and, and embrace mm. everything in an open way. Yeah, mm. it's, it's, it's very profound. It's very profound. Well, yeah. It must be difficult as well, because once we start, once we've learned to love ourselves, then it comes easy. To love anyone yeah. and everybody, right? Yeah. yeah, that is true. That is true. Now, I, I, I need to be honest, and Mark knows that as, as soon as I started Hope on the Pono, <laughs> first thing what happened that I, I went nearly broke. <laughs> 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 I had, oh yeah, I, I'm now recovering. <laughs> I, I'm for seven years in Transylvania, I'm recovering. <laughs> I, I saw it dissolving in front of my eyes, actually, because I was yeah, saying exactly. this house is like, this house is no longer ours. Everything is dust. Yeah, yes. exactly. I can so relate to it. Oh my <laughs> but, but, god! By the, by the way, Yakla, he warned me. Uh, he didn't know a lot about me. He just gave a workshop. Uh, with Mark was there, and then I invited him to my home. And before uh, he put one step in my home, he said, "What is the name of your the man who is rebuilding your home?" I, uh, I, I, I said, "Yeah, I didn't even know that name exactly." <laughs> oh, very important, he said, because if you're not going to clean on this situation, you will go broke on your building constructor, man. <laughs> well, he was right. <laughs> uh. it, it took me till about to two hundred. We started with twenty thousand euro, and it took me about two hundred thousand euro, and then I had the courage to stand up and now stop. <laughs> so, so Evo, you you just used a very important word. You said cleaning. I mean, it might have just rolled off the people's yeah. heads, but when I remember you saying we have to clean on everything. And here in the COVID, we're washing our hands as often as we can. And we got yeah. to scrub them a certain way. Yeah. So, what would you say? We what's the cleaning that we're supposed to be doing right now? Yeah, well, we can all do it in our. You know, in 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 the the whole ponopono, they they teach you that you can also find your own cleaning tools. You know, what, 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 one of the tools I discovered uh, through Ialiakla, I didn't even know, but I said, if I play piano and, and wherever I go, I play piano, not because I play so beautiful, but uh, <laughs> for me, it's a clean tool. It's to, to purify myself, my inner state of being, mm. and then also the surroundings. Mm. Um, but it, it is especially by loving. I give you one example I really loved. Uh, because when we stepped in the home with Ihaliakala, I apologized because we were rebuilding the home. And there was a, an, an ugly, uh, yeah, a TL, I don't know how you say that in English, and, and, a lamp, but but I, I didn't like that. So I said to Ihaliaka, sorry, this is uh, ugly, we need to change that. And you know what he did? He then tapped to the lamp and he said, oh, you poor thing. He said, Evo doesn't love you. <laughs> Evo doesn't love you. And then, yeah. <laughs> I, I, the, the, I, then I understood, my goodness, how often we resist in our thoughts, how often we, yes. we you know, Rumi, Rumi yes. is so beautiful, uh, let's meet each other um, beyond right and wrongdoing. Wrong, yes. And, yes, and, yes. and, and, and that space of neutrality, yes. that space yes. of divine love. Yeah. Yes. Uh, now, I, I, I think that is what we need to try to do now, to, to exactly. even with the virus, even with oh. the virus. You know, I, there is this amazing woman, uh, Anna Breitenbach. Uh, she called herself an interspecies communicator. And she shares all these me messages with, with how she communicates with animals. But a friend of her, she showed a message, was communicated with a virus. Maybe now the show will go on, I go too far. But <laughs> I, 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 I really believe that 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 every everything in this world yes. uh, every uh, everything 
every animal, uh, but also uh, the sand on the beach or, or, or human being, everything have a little bit of that light inside. Yeah. The divine I, light. And, I hear and you. Around and around it. Yeah. Once your, and channel, it. Once your channel op opens up for love yeah. and you lo yeah. let that love flow, yeah. you can't stop it. Yeah. It's like you will love yeah. everything, the rock, the, you know, everything. And yeah. it is flowing. You yeah, and, and, and that doesn't mean that, that then, because some people say, yeah, but you know, how can you agree then with people who, who do terrible things or with a financial economic system, what is dramatic? And, but uh, loving, um, does it mean you accept? Now, okay, you start to accept how things are. That is true. But it doesn't mean uh you, you 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 cannot find changes i mean you can start to rebuild but i know many mm. people who dream of a new financial system but they are so angry with the bankers they are so mm -hmm. angry <laughs> with the politician <laughs> and uh you know a, a friend of mine he in, in holland they have the Bert hellinger institute they they do uh family constellations I wasn't mm. there, but they did a constellation on the financial world. Yes, this, this this morning we were talking wow. about. Wow, we were talking about finance. constellation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they also put the banks there, and you know what happened? The banks felt rejected. Oh. And they felt uh, the hate of the people, and wow. I get goosebumps because I don't say that we should not change the bank system. I would love to see many changes. Uh, I mm. adore the books of Mark. Uh, 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 I'm fully behind it. But uh, at the same time, I like to shake hands with all the bankers mm. uh, and, and, and embrace them. And, and, mm. and, and wh why not have a real dialogue with each other from yeah, what I call love? Are you well, are you saying especially embrace them now? In this time? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, I didn't no, even think of it. You're cheeky. You're very cheeky. <laughs> I mean, Evo, you haven't met John yet, but John was part of. He was the inner sanctum of the, one of the largest banks in the world. Oh my uh, and, and I, I want to reflect on what you just said because I, I've told Anika and John my crazy story going to London, right, yeah. to visit the Queen. I mean, the Queen's bankers. Yeah. A wife whose name is uh, Penny Money Coots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Penny. That's like James Bond movie. But, you know, it was kind of a joke. But then it, I felt like I'm at the heart of, I said, the world will heal between old Amsterdam and London, Londinium, yeah. where William of Orange brought the central bank model of Holland to become the Bank of England. And in this place, in the square mile of London, is the center of all banking power in the world. But somehow I've feeling the compassion of love because I met some amazing uh, Christian bankers, very yeah. prayerful bankers yeah. who understood this matrix. And I said, you know, he said, I know so many super rich, old white, you know, British men who are just lonely. Yeah. I mean, they, they've been the architects of this thing. They've oversaw it. Uh, yeah. They know the magic of money creation, but they just want a hug. They just want, because we know we can have a better system. We, yeah. we're, we're hardwired to have a love economy, love currency, but we need to love them somehow into joining us into this new, we set the table. So yeah. Yeah. John, can you, John, can you? Uh, yes, no, please, because uh, <laughs> I've talked too much. <laughs> I love no. to hear. I want to hear more, I want to hear more from you. <laughs> no. But share a little bit. I like to feel you too. Nice. <laughs> well, you know, I've been thinking as uh, you provoked me to think. Um, <laughs> inspired me, I should say. Bankers and prayer and divine light in the city of London. <laughs> it's uh, a complex mix, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe that, you. I believe you. <laughs> it's one that I've struggled with because my my natural intention was always to do something reasonably good in this world, mm. but I found myself, for no fault of my own, <laughs> I needed to go to work. So I've got found myself as a very young man in the city of London at the age I wasn't even fifteen. So I was apprenticed 
to the city of London. Yeah. I was an apprentice in the shipping industry. I was an apprentice in the stock market. I was apprenticed in banking. I was apprenticed in Fleet Street. I was apprenticed in Threadneedle Street and Cornhill. I know the city of London like the back and the front of my hand. Wow. Wow. <laughs> From a boy, right the way through my career, my activities started from the city of London. I walked past the Bank of England every day and the Royal Exchange and through, through all the great financial institutions. And I knew many of the senior people. I looked for goodness. I looked for where was that institution doing good work? And what I found were the worshipful companies. London has many worshipful companies. Have you ever heard of them? Yeah. The worshipful company of stationers, the worshipful uh -huh. company of goldsmiths, the worshipful company of haberdashers, yeah. the worshipful company of fruiterers. Yeah. Many, many worshipful companies. And they do excellent charity work. They do, they have one they provide for the destitute and for education. And I went to many of these dinners. And I used these, uh, these worshipful companies' halls for my own uh, business purposes. And these were good people doing good work. And yet, I found it very difficult to find those same people in the institutions where they were working. They had to step outside the institution to do good work <laughs> in their worshipful company, mm -hmm. where they could consider they could consider God, consider righteousness, consider appropriate action. Yeah. But when I went to see them in their offices, yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was a game going on. Yeah. They weren't there to actually pursue truth. They were there to pursue profit at almost any expense. I would say any expense. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And so the great uh, dilemma of my life uh, in the city of London uh, was to try to mix good work with banking. Yeah. So I persuaded oh. one of the institutes I worked for to create charities which they allowed me to run, yeah. set up training academies and, yeah. and um, uh, scholarships at Cambridge and elsewhere. Yeah. So once again, I could see the work being done because I was guiding the money to these institutions and persuading them and encouraging them to evolve their new training programs. But no one in the institutions really wanted to get involved. Yeah. They wanted the beaver aware at making money or oh, have some John by all means. You want three million or four million? Take it, you know, go and do what you have to do. We know you'll use it well. Yeah. But they didn't want to get involved. Yeah. John, can I ask you a question? I need to come in here once you're finished because this is I always say too much. This is no 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 <laughs> no 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 no. Please this continue. is what I I struggle with, and I this has actually become my challenge when I get, you know, abused by everybody. When I say, yes, it's okay to do charity, right? As you have rightly said, all these institutions would have CSR, uh, you know, sections or charities set up, and. Here I am, the you know the naive person I am, and I keep on thinking, okay, why set up a charity? Why not you know start from the foundation that mm -hmm. you know the inequality we firstly created, yeah. then we have to give charity to feel good about it, yeah. and not talk about why is there this injustice, yeah. you know? So you've so beautifully said it, yeah. and. I think that was also my trauma, <laughs> you know, that, you know, when you trigger something, those points, you know, the acupuncture, you put the needle there. And I feel like, yes, exactly. Yeah. So what, what do we do about thing, it? What, what, one, add one point to this, because it really mm. brings it, brought it home to me. Mm. While I was responsible for communication and, um, public policy, government relationships, and things of that nature, and, by the way, uh, the corporate identity. So once I managed to persuade these colleagues of mine to set aside vast amounts of money for my own, for my own good works, they said, Call, put it under the corporate responsibility budget, John. <laughs> oh, right. Corporate responsibility. <laughs> I mean, what sort of 
generosity of giving is that. We can set it off against tax here, that there, this or that there. And anyway, he's dealing with it. We don't want to do it. It's our corporate responsibility. And now when someone says to me, do we have a corporate responsibility program? Oh yes, bring in, bring in John, he'll talk about corporate responsibility. I didn't want to use those words at all. I wanted to use the word of good work and uh, thank God for this uh, opportunity to be of service to others. But you, they change the language. Mm. They refuse yeah. to use proper language. That's yeah. what yeah. bankers do. Yeah. They, yeah. they mix up the, the they mix up their trading transactions, mm. uh, and they use they mis misname everything they do. Yeah. They mm. don't name it by the proper word. And I believe you set me off. You know, uh, <laughs> you're a I'm I glad <laughs> we have to use the right words. Yeah. Now Mark has a real problem and so do i with debt yeah i i despise debt yeah. i i've never had any debt i'm a very poor man by the way but i've never had any debt <laughs> because debt was an anathema to me mm. when i was brought up debt was was a bad thing yeah and so what did they do is said oh it's not debt it's credit and you get a credit rating and you become <laughs> anything you want but because you've got credit so they changed the name from debt to credit, a great illusion. Mm. And as Mark well knows. Uh, and they, what uh, about maximizing profit then? Well, <laughs> may, may, may I say that, and Ivo knows this, um, all of you know this, of course, it's an interesting attribute of language that we've flipped the words, the meaning of the words, yeah. you know. I would say the inverse of love is evil, or Evo, just kidding. I'm just joking. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, um, or that, you know, wealth means the conditions of well being. Uh, debt is credit. Uh, yeah. we, then we use words for, for money. We use money words, which are equivalent to water words, banks, and currency, liquidity. So we have this weird inversion of yeah. the original spirit and energy of the words, exactly. which we, we hear wealth, we hear profit. Yeah. Yeah. And you say, well, I could show you where Luca Pazzioli and Leonardo da Vinci never defined the word profit, not even once, yeah. in yeah. their Summa Medica on double entry bookkeeping. Yeah. So yeah. as a business professor, what am I teaching? Yeah. Uh, that you're maximizing profits? Actually, no, they, they didn't define profit. So, yeah. you know, we have these interesting but, inversions. Mark, so Mark, now we have sort of replaced profit with impact, right? So what do we yeah. say about that? Because now we say it's impact investment and that's all ethical. I, I'm well, sorry, I, I don't I'd understand. Like to, I'd like to bring Evo because Evo, you wrote this brilliant book and I'm not sure how many books you sold, but uh, you know, that, <laughs> no, I mean, you boldly said love is currency. And I remember I, I was actually about to read the, the forward I wrote to your book. And I said, I know Evo, I know his pain too. He suffered in this relationship with money. He's come to this place because of your your own relationship with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we it's not that we can't say we don't have different systems of accounting and creating money without debt. It's, no. We can look back to ancient civilizations. That's what I'm podcasting this morning, and saying we can't say that we didn't know that we we didn't have alternatives. And so now, in this moment when we see our our leaders every day briefing us, right. I said, why isn't Evo briefing Holland or Romania right now every day and saying, <laughs> you know, we're not stuck here. You wrote a book about love is legal tender. Tell us about that. <laughs> I, I, I'd love to. Get, do I get your permission to, to briefly respond on John? Because I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm very touched by what you express. Uh, I, I've never been in the city of London working. Uh, I know a little bit the Dutch uh, financial world and uh, I have been exposing together with my brother uh, perhaps one of the largest financial scandals in, in the Netherlands. Uh, I know uh, how people can, they do nearly everything. I, I, they, they might even kill other people. I, I, I know the darkness of that place you are talking about. And when I talk about love, and, and it's a big misunderstanding. A lot of people think, oh, it's about butterflies, being nice and positive. <laughs> if you talk about love, you also need to talk about hate, about evil. And I'm so happy John shared this. I think uh, it is uh, very important now to 
expose and to make transparent all what is happening. Because all what we, you have this metaphor of the bowl. Uh, if you have a bowl, you push it on the water, then it will come uh, with a big uh, speed up again. So all what we suppress, look at the, uh, how we misuse children, uh, even mm. on high level. Uh, mm. in, uh, uh, um, uh, everywhere, uh, how we uh, treat each other in a financial world. I am not in the category of people who say we should not talk about it. No, just be positive. No, 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 no. Um, yes, mm. I try to look through the eyes of love. Uh, if I hear what John say, I can imagine I probably also would struggle to succeed there. But it is important to share. So love for me is also to face everything, light, darkness, mm. to share it, not with the aim to destroy the other party, to destroy that banker, but with the aim to maybe even liberate him and touch his soul to make it, because I think a lot of those people don't even have feelings anymore. They're, they're, they're a psychopath. Mm. I'm sorry to mm. say that, but, mm -hmm. but uh, they have no feeling. They don't even know. And, and it's time we start to see that. In, in, uh, uh, you are from the UK, John? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. There is a lady, uh, her name is Anna Breeze. She uh, used to work for a former BBC journalist. She now is actually talking a lot about this kind of darkness, what is going on in the UK. And I love it how she does it. And it's important that we stand up. Um, so I want to thank you and I want to know a lot more about you uh, and, and to read about it. It's so important we share this and don't put this under the carpet. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, John. <laughs> thank you, Eva. And what was the, the question again? <laughs> <laughs> I question love is legal tender. Let's okay. We, yeah. But, but no, thank you. I mean, thank you because a lot of the discussions we've had is about this acknowledgement that there is darkness. There, yeah. You know, to me, evil is is simply the rejection of love. Sin is a rejection of love. Uh, Hope Ponopono teaches us love is who we are. There's only that truth. So th this illusion that we're separated from each other. The animals teach us that. Nature teaches us. Yeah. So this illusion that we're kind of waking out of this tr from this trance. We're under a spell. I like the word spelling. We're under a spell. Yeah. And um, so this, this is the mo this is a moment when yeah. we can be self isolated and reflective and yeah. and and pay attention yeah. to what is what is being birthed. What's the new story waiting to pierce us? Yeah, 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 yeah. That is so true. That is so true. Now the title of that book, "Love: uh, a, a Plea for Love Is Legal Tender," is just to tickle the people. <laughs> to, uh, you know, uh, Mark, you just mentioned how we introduced money in the UK. I don't know, in England, for six, seven, eight hundred years, there tally was stick. no money. Uh, there was we, a tally used, stick. Uh, a tally a stick. stick. A wooden stick, and the yeah. Brits don't know their history. Uh, I went to the Bank so of England. Or, they don't know. Exactly. So we, we already experienced a period without money. <laughs> uh, we, we are the only living beings on this planet who need to pay money for food for home i mean mm -hmm. uh, the animals don't do the fish <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big crazy system we invented that ourselves and uh, in a way at the end i don't think so any s system will solve the problem until we uh, become human again mm. because uh, I, uh, I, I was actually just reading an, an, a vision of an, another friend of mine. He sometimes go out of his body. He lives in Scotland and then he describes what he see. And he just made a description on money and economy. And he, he, he said, maybe one day the whole internet will explode and we won't be able to touch uh, our money. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. some people, some people, he said, will die. Not that because they have to die, but... Uh, you know, the poor people were okay because they already knew how to deal with, with nothing. But the, the, the people who are more wealthy, they don't know what to do. It is time we start to develop a new consciousness. In my opinion, we don't need to agree. But in my opinion, that the real value is not in the money. Okay, they let us believe that and we believe that. But the real value is not in the But it's in you and in me. And it is in your talent. It is in my talent. It is in my gift to you and your gifts to me. And, mm. and 
the whole idea that we need to pay each other for that, if you really think about it, it's ridiculous. But okay, somehow we, we created this and um, uh, yeah, and, 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 and we need to go back, I think, to, to that original uh, situation that we start to see uh, the value in the human being again and in every living sentient being instead of in the money. But yeah, okay, tomorrow I need to pay my bill. So I'm also in that system. I join. Um, but yes, I, I, I hope we find other ways. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I have to reflect because it's uh, Holy Thursday. And I was saying to my yeah. friends that when I was in, in Jerusalem uh, in 1992, I was there during the Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. And uh, my, my friend said, never show the bottom of your feet. So t tonight, Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. People don't understand what a profound uh, act of humility yeah. the night before he gets nailed. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and all kinds of other things happen, of course. But yeah. a reminder that, and, and, and he, he taught us three times about money. He said, tax, where are you going to get the shekel from? Well, first of all, he said, give unto Caesar what Caesar, what you just said. Yeah, you pay the bill. You do your, you pay your taxes because that's, that's what you do. Uh, uh, yeah. But if you're worried about the money, uh, ask the fish. He's got a shekel in his mouth. Don't you believe it? <laughs> you know, and if you need, if you need energy, just look up the, yeah. the sun. And uh, so we have these teachings already that remind us money is just something we created out of our imagination and we're not beholden to that story yeah. unless we agreed to the story or we were yeah. ignorant of an alternative so i think it's very exciting what you're talking about and i mean love is legal tender sounds insane <laughs> it is uh, even, <laughs> but that's what the word ecstasy means uh, to yeah. be out of our minds so we have to be a little bit out of our bodies out of our minds to look down and go as your friend said, he saw everything. I mean, I've, I've had the same vision. What if there's a cataclysm? James Bond, one of the movies, sh yeah. showed that. If, yeah. if the whole system went down. Right now, we're self-isolated. Oh, yeah. we, we see it a little bit now with corona. I, I, I yeah. don't believe what is happening. I, 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 I really don't understand what is happening. But, I, uh, but I see for how me, many... yeah. yeah, like on a mystical level, this yeah. is an illumination of conscience. This is a, we haven't, we're not there yet. But exactly. we know, you know, my friend Caroline, we know the indigenous people, they're yeah. fine. Where are they? They're out in the land with their kids. Exactly. They're talking to the beaver and the moose and the, yeah. And, yeah. And the little herbs in the ground that are saying, yeah. eat me, help, yeah. I will heal you. That's yeah. why I exist. Yeah. And we're so like fearful and <laughs> self-isolating. Yeah. But it, um, it's an interesting time. Yeah. Um, very nice. <laughs> you mentioned Evo that you were seeing the animals coming out and they're being more free. Yeah. I've observed the I observed the birds very closely. I have an yeah. affinity with birds. Yeah. Um well, I hope they have an affinity with me. <laughs> and I'm seeing them fly more freely. Really? Really? I've seen actually patterns of flight change. Now this sounds crazy. No, I believe you. <laughs> But they're actually, the, the, the seagull here, there, there are many of them in whole varieties of this. There are over 65 breeds of seagull. Yeah. But some of the larger species here are doing the most incredible Jonathan seagull like uh, death dives uh, and taking the, the thermals up in a different way. And I've observed them all my life. I'm not imagining it. They're flying differently. They seem to be very, very happy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Nature is actually responding. The animal life is responding. I'm hearing this from many people. I heard it from you. I've experienced it myself. Uh, my brother, other brother-in-law lives up in the countryside. He's seeing yeah. the movement is different in the woods. Yeah. Oh, so oh. We, we really are doing the planet and the earth and the animal world tremendous amount of good by staying, being in isolation. Yeah. They're, they're feeling it. Yeah. They really are. It's true. So, you know, one of my friends from Pakistan, he is yeah. this, uh, he writes poetry. He's an artist, he paints, he writes poets, poetry, like mystical poetry. And he shared something so beautiful. So he belongs, he comes from a village 
And he said, one day I'm just resting there and I'm just observing that a crow comes and he sits on a buffalo. And the buffalo is not, you know, she, she's not bothered about the crow sitting on her. And he said, I kept on imagining if one day this crow would come and sit on top of me, but he's so scared. <laughs> He said, I have to maybe become a buffalo for them to see I'm not a danger to them. But imagine, this is how divided our ecology is. That, you know, we kill animals and animals now, their spirit knows that we are danger to them, right? So I think what you said, we become that love that they also get this signal and think that we are one of them. We are part of the community. Yeah. Yeah. It was so profound, it gave me goosebumps. And I said, wow, what a way of looking yeah. at things that we become all love. So we radiate that love. So other other Absolutely. species also can then feel that vibration. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I beg your indulgence? This is not my time to speak, but I just remembered something happened to me, which I think is important. May I? May I? Please. please. Oh, please. Come on, John. <laughs> so, you're, you're the wise guy in the circle. So. I was in yeah. North... uh, I don't know. <laughs> so I was in Northern Australia, Northern, Northern Australia yeah. on the, on the East coast, way beyond, way beyond humanity, civilization. <laughs> <laughs> there was a small little yeah. hut corral yeah. where lonely travelers such as I could stay. And um, I, I took a walk along the beach that evening, not a soul to be seen. And suddenly I heard this, <laughs> I heard that a few times. Sorry. <laughs> For some minutes, this bird I couldn't see and I made the same communication. And I thought, I wonder if I change it. So I went, beep -boo, beep -boo, beep -boo. <laughs> and that went on for a while. I thought, let's have another one. I thought, this is extraordinary. And I wasn't out of my head. I'd never do get taken dope in my life. So, at once, sorry. <laughs> and anyway, this discussion went on with the bird for quite a few minutes. And then I, I saw it was getting dark and I thought, I better go back so I didn't. You know, they don't have to, if there's any food. But anyway, so I went back to this place, very, very simple place. At six o'clock, I was up and out and I walked. And I walked up this hill, which looked out on the sea. And I was struggling up this uh, uh, sandy, muddy hill. And I came to a rock, which is in front of me. And I had to get hold of a root and pull myself up. And I looked up and sitting on the rock was this huge bird. It went, and I thought, my God, this is the bird I was speaking to last night. And it jumped on my head. <laughs> it was a bird of about this size. I don't know what it was. Wow. It jumped on my head. And I thought, be still in every yeah. sense. And this bird was very happy on my head. Wow. Somehow, I, I and he or she had tapped into each other mm. and it saw me going out in the early morning mm. and I hadn't made any bird call of any kind. So I used to be able to impersonate birds when I was a little boy. But it jumped on my head and it then jumped back on the rock and it looked at me. It was in love. Mm. Love was being expressed by this bird to me. As I sit here talking to you, this is the truth. I, another experience with, uh, in, in nature. When nature talks to you, it talks to you when you talk to it. That's right. and, it's, and it's not an unusual thing. If yes. we actually give ourselves to nature, to the animal, we will communicate, we will become one, and then we identify, we see the human in us and the animal in them and the human in them and the animal in us, and the natures merge together. And at that level, you then become one with nature, truly, and everything. <laughs> it is the most amazing thing. And I've had 
forgive me, a number of experiences like this, but that one is, was quite profound and quite strong and lives with me. I'm sorry, what did I say? No, wow. that's all right. Thank you. Can so, I, yes, beautiful. That was a beautiful thank share. You. Can we bring in Evo now? And I need to ask you, Evo, that um, you talk about forgiveness. It's very difficult, right? <laughs> <laughs> For, yeah. No, it is difficult. It's yeah. starting f with your own self. It's difficult. Yeah. So how yeah. do we, any advice, how do we do it? You do all these practices and meditation. Oh, yeah. You know, just give us something <laughs> something today <laughs> uh what what i i, I uh, uh, somebody in holland he gave a beautiful definition around forgiveness and he said what is the true forgiveness he said if you forgive you let go you let go the hope of a better past oh. so you let go <laughs> Very the true. hope of a better past Wow. And that, that definition <laughs> helped me so much that for me now it's quite easy. <laughs> uh, because so it, brings you, it brings you straight away back uh, in, in, the, in yourself. Mm -hmm. So not mm -hmm. in the person who tried to beat you, stole your money, hit your face, whatever. Mm -hmm. It brings you, because I cannot, I cannot change that past. But it is to how to yeah to get to clean again with that feeling inside. Mm, mm, mm. To clean with that feeling inside. Yeah. 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 It's about emptying yourself, as they yeah. say. That's a Sufi practice as well. How is do it? you empty self? Yeah. 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 But then there's a danger as well. If you f forgive everybody, you will start loving your exes as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm joking. We're just being yeah. cheeky today. Yeah. It's your spirit. Mm. It's your spirit. <laughs> Full disclosure. I'm very touched yeah. again, John, by your story. It's, um, I don't know. I, uh, sure. it, it's, it's one of my dreams as a hobby, but I would love to communicate with animals, but you are doing it. I feel I, this, is, this is it. We should not make it even bigger or smaller, but this is it. <laughs> this is it. And, and this is also love. This is the union. This is... And, and I think it was Tolstoy who said, um, as long as we build slaughterhouses, there will be war. That's why I love so much in Holland. We have the party, we have the party of the animals. It's actually quite a popular party in the Netherlands. Mm. And a lot of people don't like the title. Uh, because, yeah, animals, we should talk about economy. But I really believe if we can get at that level that the bird can land on your head, and mm. if one, mm. uh, we won't be going to war anymore. We won't cheat our neighbor with a few bucks. Or and maximize that, our profits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and at the end, and I don't want to be pessimist, but, but at the end, yeah, we can create whatever system we want. But as long as we don't clean ourselves, yes. we will always have people who cheat in whatever system we create i don't say we don't need other systems yes we need them and i'm i'm longing for them uh, at the same time we should always go inside and see what 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 role do i play here in this whole game mm. and and why can i not be good with my neighbor in the current system mm. starts with yourself yeah before pointing it, fingers to it others is, it yeah. is and and not or or and and <laughs> to me yeah, yeah. Wow, what a beautiful uh, meeting of you. Oh, yes. Yeah. So parting reflection from Mark, maybe. Well, Eva, I thank you. I mean, we could talk for hours, but yeah. I think your last reflection is very profound and, and it actually, uh, it's challenging to to imagine. I mean, you and I, you know, we, well, all four of us really live and, you know, the indigenous people have a, a legend which says one day we, we will wake from our, our trance and we will crawl back to the sheltering branches of the, of the tree of life. So engorged that we've been with the tree of knowledge, seeking, yeah. uh, seeking really the really the tree of life. Uh, you know, we have that old, that old Testament story, but the story is a real, it's not just a metaphor. Yeah. And, and so each one of us has to make the choice to crawl on our knees back to the beautiful, where we will sit together under the, sheltering branches and, and the Kabbalah, right? The whole circle is the image. Yeah. 
Huh. And the, the other reflection I have is, as we talked to animals present themselves all the time. I've been told I'm the eagle, I'm the phoenix. I'm like, what do you mean a phoenix? You're not a thunderbird? Can I be a thunderbird? No, you're the phoenix. Well, we know the legend of the phoenix bird. How, why am I the, you know, why am I the phoenix? Uh, but eagles present themselves all the time to me. And I say, and the native people say, you're the eagle. Do you know what that means? I said, no. I said, you're flying high. You're, you're always, you know, looking down from above on these lofty ideals. Um, but I have a reflection that is from Anastasia. You probably, we've talked about this, the Ringing Cedars of Russia book, which yeah. some people would say, it can't be possible that these ancient okay. people, Vedros people, lived in the middle of Siberia in the, in the forest and lived on the principles of love. It's, it sounds like a fairy tale, but what if it was true? Yeah. And what if they still have a reminder and what Anastasia says, not Anastasia, Anastasia, this woman yeah. from the Vedras civilization says, yeah. basically all creation holds its breath waiting for us to say, I love you. Yeah. All the animals, they exist. They, yeah. they exist to, to be in, heart, in relationship with us, which is the, what uh. the indigenous people teach. Yeah. So this is a call to renew a relationship. Yeah. Uh, and love is a technology. Love is, yeah. you know, it, it is an action. Uh, it is a choice. And yet sometimes it feels daunting against this fierce opposition as Einstein yeah. said, by mediocre minds, yeah. we, mm. we, yet we persist. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Thank and you. So, Thank you so anyways. much for today, Ivo. Uh, I mean, uh, may, I, may, I, may I give one more technique? If you, if you don't yeah. know how to do it, just, <laughs> just stand on your head. <laughs> <laughs> like Lily is. <laughs> And, and, and look at another way to the same story. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry. Much love, love to both of you. We'll speak again. Bye for now. So much. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks. Thanks.